I really debated whether to put this video up or not. So you might notice around me is a lot of chaos and disorder. And this is something that I typically would never ever dream of sharing online. Um, the reason for this is that I'm going through a huge transition in my life uh, across board and my physical space is part of that. Now part of this video might seem a bit disjointed and discombobulated but bear with me. So I am what I like to term a recovering perfectionist and yes it doesn't quite look like it at the moment but those who know me well know that it's something that I have struggled with for a very very long time. I have to say though I am grateful for that trait that God has put in me because I feel that my hunger and addiction to being a perfectionist has gotten me where I am today. It has helped me with my educational career, it's helped me with my professional career. So I've done really well in both. I achieved top marks um, at school and I have achieved a lot of things in my professional career. So I studied economics, the science of economics at university and I got a first class in that. I've completed my MBA. I am a CFA charter holder and I'm an investment banker. And I feel like that trait has really gone a long way in making me who I am today. But the downside of this trait or this addiction, if you can't learn to manage it, is that it stands in the way of a lot of things that you might want to do. Speaking for myself, my strive for perfectionism has really been a stumbling block when it comes to projects or when it comes to my passion. Even filming for YouTube is something I radically enjoy. I love creating content. I love communicating with you. I really enjoy the process of being creative. So it's almost like my strife of perfectionism causes an internal conflict. There's a war going on within me. And if you're anything like me, I think you'll understand what I'm saying, whereby my mind struggles a lot and wars with my spirit almost on a daily basis. I'm one of those people who's very good at a lot of things because I put my blood, sweat and tears in everything I do. I'm someone who won't sleep until it's done to a degree that I think it should be done at. So if it's not done to a certain standard, I won't sleep, I won't eat, I won't drink until it's done. I remember back in the day when I was at university and I would study <laughs> from, I'd get to the library from 8 a.m. I would not move from that spot for about seven, eight hours and maybe take a break, get some food at that point, and then carry on until I was the last person in the library. And I remember a friend of mine joking with me at graduation, he asked me, oh, so what, you know, what was your result? And I said to him, I got a first class. And he said, of course you did. You know, and in my language, there's something called ethical. It means that you're a bookworm or a study, like a nerd or something. I wasn't even aware that I was doing this. I wasn't aware that this was my regimen every single day. And he said to me, Jumoke, every single time I would walk into the library, I would see you in that corner, that nook that you really liked. And I would go back and forth, but you're still there. So he just said like, how is it possible that one person can stay still for so long studying? But Anyway, that's the sort of personality I have. Um, I'm very, very committed to what I do, but I do know that perfectionism has stopped me from doing a lot of things. An example is that, you know, oftentimes I get such amazing insights on a day-to-day -day basis. I've been doing a lot of reflecting over the past few months, maybe even years, as to what my purpose in life is and what my passion is. If you're anything like me, you'll understand what I'm talking about. It's an internal war on a day-to-day -day basis where you can't just sit still and be in the moment and enjoy the beauty of life, enjoy the things that life has to offer. You're constantly thinking about, I need to do this. This needs to be perfected. I haven't finished that. I need to reach out to that person. There's constantly something that is demanding of your attention. And the downside of that is something called analysis paralysis, where you overthink every single detail and you suck the life out of whatever it is you wanted to do. You analyze everything to the last infinitesimal detail. And by the time you are done with the process of overanalyzing everything, you're exhausted and I think that flow, that passion you had has left. And oftentimes I get ideas or insights about 
videos you know something comes to me when I'm just reflecting and I'd love to film at that moment but I say to myself well you know my house is a mess right now because I'm again going through a transition I don't have the right setting I need to do this do that and the more I ponder over it the more the moment goes away from me I write things down the next day the momentum that I had initially is gone and I really debated whether to put this video up or not but I felt like as part of this healing process my recovery process it was important for me to put this video up this is me really being vulnerable and it's something that I'm not used to but it's a journey that I feel like I need to go on I'm sure that there's someone watching right now who feels exactly the same way that I do where you feel like you're doing all these amazing things, but you haven't quite found your passion or you haven't quite found your purpose in life because I feel that, you know, time is running away. I'm getting older. There are so many things that I'm yet to accomplish. I will complete a different video on passion and the pursuit of purpose because I feel that it is part of a huge part of the primary reasons why I've been having internal conflicts. I feel that even though I've achieved a lot of amazing things in my life, and again, that's not something I'm used to saying, but I'm, it's part of the journey, it's part of the process. I'm someone who is used to successes, and even saying that makes me cringe a little bit because it seems like I'm being, what's the word I'm looking for? Complacent or I'm being arrogant, and that's not the case at all. This is all part of this cycle and this transition that I'm going through. I often think, why is it so hard for us to praise ourselves for the good things we've done? but we find it very easy to come down very hard on ourselves for the mistakes we've made. And I really want to change that. Um, so that's part of my healing process. And in my instance, being able to articulate and verbalize certain things is also part of letting go of that perfectionism and just living in the moment, being myself, enjoying life and not being too hard on myself, which is my default mode. Someone might say your strive to be a perfectionist is not an addiction. Those around me have seen sort of the chaos and you know the emotional trauma that I've been through in pursuit of perfectionism so it's different for everyone and I think that on this journey it is extremely important to have the right people around you. My goodness it is of the utmost importance to be very very intentional about those you have around you because really that can make or break you when you are in a very sensitive position. I'm trying to examine different aspects of my life. I'm trying to let go of things that shouldn't be in my life anyway, that I've held on to for so long. The dead weight can come in different shapes, forms and sizes. Um, that can be in terms of your friendships, your relationships. That could be in terms of a job that makes you absolutely miserable. It could be in terms of your physical environment. It could be in terms of what you expose yourself to, what you read, what you listen to, and those you take advice from. The onus is on each person to examine your life and figure out what that is for you, because that in itself can be a hindrance to you progressing in your healing journey. So I am not sure if I'm going to post this video. I'll see how I feel at the end of it, but I really thought it was important to document this moment with all the chaos around me, yes. <laughs> um, for the future and I really want to share this with you as well. So I will be sharing with you the life designs that I learn on my journey. I'll be bringing to you the insights that I've learned that for people like me should help you in terms of getting to become the person that you want to be and getting to do the things that you desperately want to do which you believe will make you happy and the hope is that at some point I stop drowning in my own self-inflicted horrors and I start enjoying what God, what life has to offer and has made freely available for me to embrace. Thank you for watching.